Hello YouTube. Let's today talk about a really popular pattern that's found in game development, the command pattern. But before we just dive into it, let's take a look at an example of where a command pattern would be really useful. In this case, I have a turn-based tactic game. Think like Fire Emblem or Final Fantasy Tactics. This is called Into the Breach. And I have these three robot characters I can kind of move and take turns with. And every turn that I perform could be seen as, as a command. So I can literally move a guy, say, here, right? I moved him at the top. But one of the more interesting benefits the command pattern gives you is you'll notice right here where my mouse is, we have an undo move button. And so because I just performed that command and we queued it up, we can also reverse things that we've done in the same order. So I can actually undo that move. And just like before, we're back to where we started. So let's take a look at a real-time strategy game like StarCraft. In a game like this, I can select a unit, I can right click, and they'll head to wherever I wanna go. And something that's really interesting in an RTS game is I can actually hold shift and right click a couple places and then try and build something. And you'll see that we actually queue up different commands and our unit will do them one at a time. And this is an excellent use case for the command pattern because we are literally issuing commands, queuing them up and doing them one by one by one by one. And that is essentially the command pattern and what's happening. In a project setting, you'll basically have a command class or object that you can inherit from. And you wanna put all of your action or event code stored within this command, isolated from everything else. And then you more or less basically just have objects that receive these commands and execute them. They just say, do whatever you're supposed to do. Oh, you're a move command? Go move. Go do whatever you have to do. And then they just track if it's like finished or something like that. And then you want to keep track of your commands as they get issued, right? So that you do them one by one by one. And as you go through them, you also log it a little bit so you can kind of undo a command that's already been executed, if that makes sense. And it's way more complicated than it really sounds. At the end of the day, you're kind of just putting all of your action logic into this thing and you're just calling them and making sure they finish before you do the next one. And again, we already talked about like a tactics game or an RTS game, but this is useful in other things too. Anytime you have a situation where it's important for things to be executed in a certain order, the command pattern will be good in. This is the case for if you're making like a multiplayer game and you have server and client code going back and forth, you wanna make sure that some things get executed before others. Or if you have something like, uh, like a monetary transaction, it's important to make sure some things are done first. Or if you have some game case where, you know, you really need to rewind things. Off the top of my head, I, maybe this isn't even a good use case, but I could imagine the command pattern being useful for something like a replay system, where if you played a match of say StarCraft, you could actually log every single command that's been executed in a game, and then basically have a system where it reruns all of those commands at the same time points, and you basically replay a match of a game or something like that, right? Off the cuff, that seems like a, a feasible use case of the command pattern. And now I wanna show you a quick example in Unity of how you could quickly set one up. And it's gonna be pretty simple, so don't expect anything crazy, but it definitely gets you on the track. Okay, so I have this example project here, and we basically have this square. And if I press W, A, S, and D, we're just gonna be able to move every time, right? So I'm literally just moving a little bit every time you press a key, simple stuff. I have this move script that's attached to that square and that's the only thing. And its update function looks like this. We're basically checking if we press WSAD and if we've put any inputs in, right, we basically tell the transform to translate up, down, left, right of vector two. Very simple. But in this case, instead of just telling our transform to do it directly, we'd like to encapsulate this move logic in a move command so that we could undo our moves, let's say. Okay, so let's now introduce a move command. You could be doing this through an interface, but in this case, I used an abstract class. So you'll see we have this public abstract command class. And right now, the only thing it can do is execute. I then also made a move command class that inherits from command, restoring a transform target, a vector to translation, and then we have a constructor here to actually create a move command. And it takes a transform and a vector to translation. And the key difference right here is instead of telling our square player object, hey, because you pressed S, we want you to transform, translate down, you know, zero, negative one, vector two, that's a direct call, right? We're literally telling our game object to take your transform and move. 
In this case, with this move command, we're trying to give all that responsibility of moving to this command, like stop telling the player to do that. And instead, just tell the player to execute this move command. That's all it has to do. So we'll be passing in a transform, passing in a vector two, and then in this execute function, you'll see we're doing exactly what the player was doing before. We're saying, take the target transform, translate it, and then whatever vector two we're passing in, that's the amount we want to translate. And if we now go back to this player move script, you'll see instead of doing the translations under our input checks like we were just a little bit ago, in the example of pressing W, we're now making a move up command and we're passing in the player transform, the vector two translation we'd like to move by. So in this case, it's just vector two dot up. And then we're saying, hey, take that command and execute. And we're doing that for S going down, we're doing that for A going left, we're doing that for D going right. And when you play the game, it's the exact same, right? It looks no different than it did when I started the example, but now we've actually gone ahead and separated the concern of handling the movement logic in this command and just telling the player to like, oh, you press that, make a command and do it. And so this is good, but let's now tackle our final obstacle, which would be undoing a command and having something like manage these things. Okay, so I'm gonna try and implement undo on the fly here. In our abstract class command, we wanna add another method that we will force our commands basically to make. And that's gonna be an undo function. So I'll say public abstract void undo. In our move command, it'll now complain because we're not, you know, we didn't make an undo method. So we'll say public override undo. And in this case, if we're translating a certain amount, uh, for the way I have this set up, we probably just want to do the inverse of that, which would be, you know, the negative version of that. So I can simply just say target dot translate negative translation. And that should work. We'll see if it does. <laughs> And so let's think about this. If our commands are able to undo themselves, well, you'd probably need something to track the order of commands being executed or when they've been executed in this case of an undo method and basically just say, oh, this one was the most recent command to be executed. I wanna undo that. Let's just take it from the top. And a stack is pretty useful for something like that as a data type or a data collection, I mean. And so there's a lot of places you could put this. I could put it right here for the demo. Um, a clean way is probably to make something like a command manager and to have some sort of singleton instance on it. I, that's pretty common. There's really a lot of ways to go about it though, especially if like in the case of an RTS like StarCraft, every unit kind of seems to have its own command queue, so to speak. But in a game like Into the Breach where you just had that undo turn thing during the game, that's probably done with something like a command manager because uh, you don't need to be so granular on individual units. Okay, so I just made a quick command manager singleton. And what makes it a singleton is we're basically at the top saying, hey, public static. So this becomes a global variable command manager instance. And this makes it so basically anywhere in the project, regardless of what script I'm on, I could say command manager dot instance and then access the functions that's gonna be on this script, right? And then in our awake method here, we're basically saying if an instance exists, and it's not this, meaning like we created another version of this command manager, well then we wanna destroy it because we only ever want there to be one of these. Otherwise, if it hasn't been created yet, the first time we create it, we set the instance to this. But this is the singleton pattern. We're talking about the command pattern. Main point here is we can access the command manager in other scripts by accessing this instance variable. And so on here, what we probably want is a stack of commands. This is one way to go about it. And this will be our executed commands. And so I'm just gonna make it public for the demo, but you can say public stack of type commands. So it doesn't have to just be move commands. It could be any type of command. And we'll call this executed commands, initialize the stack. And so in here, what we wanna do is make a new method and call undo. So we can say something like public void undo last command. We can check to see if there's anything in our stack. So we can say if executed commands dot count is equal to zero, then maybe we'll just return and get out of here. Otherwise, what we wanna do is get the last one that was put onto the stack and just tell it to call undo. So we could say something like var last command equals executed commands dot pop, and then just simply say last command dot undo. And so now we just need something that's actually gonna call this undo last command function in our player move script, I'll just do another input here and say if input.getKeyDown 
uh, key code maybe R, whatever. It doesn't really matter here. Uh, and in here, now we'll just simply say command manager dot instance dot undo last command. And so here, we're actually gonna tell our stack to undo commands, right? But we're never actually putting our commands onto the stack. So back in our command manager, we can make another method, say public void push command and tell our executed command stack to push and we'll pass in a command argument. So just like this, we push onto the stack and then we pop from the stack and tell it to undo. In this case, we just want to push onto it so that it exists. We don't actually want to tell it to do it. Um, and it's worth noting in this command manager, let's say like StarCraft, you want it to be able to queue up a bunch of commands. It doesn't really make sense with the example I have because it's just instant moving. Um, you would probably want to have some sort of thing on your command for like a public abstract bool is finished, right? You want to be able to say, hey, the command's done. Um, and then in your command manager, you basically want to store a queue of commands. And every time you like, let's say right click or do something like that, you want to end queue on the queue. That's a weird thing to say, but basically you want to take your commands, put them in the queue and then execute the first one, check to see if it's finished. When it's finished, do the next one, check to see if it's finished, do the next one and so on. But it doesn't make sense in my game. So we will not do is finished. But here in our move command, as soon as we execute, we can pop onto it. And I'm just gonna do it in here. I think that makes sense. So we'll say command manager dot instance dot push command of this. So every time this command executes, we push onto executed commands. That just makes sense. So before I test this, I'm actually just gonna make a command manager in my scene quick. So I'll create an empty game object, call it command manager. And then I'll just make sure I have command manager script attached. I know my face is in the way here, but it is. So now we're running the game. I can press R and we're not getting any errors in the console. That's a good thing. I can now press left one time, right? It just moved once. And if I press R, we see it goes right back. So I could move around a little bit and then I can just press R and go all the way back to the beginning. So this is working perfectly, right? I can make a whole bunch of commands and then literally just spam R and it will undo all of them back to the starting position. And so I know it wasn't very sophisticated what I was doing there, but it was really quick to set up that command pattern with what I had. And you might be surprised, it really isn't too bad if you had a more complicated game or system to actually adapt that to the command pattern. And it kind of gives you a lot of flexibility there. And it's nice to have that separation. I was just doing this real time for the demo as I was recording and it took me probably like eight minutes to set up and then longer just to record through it. But yeah, it's, it's really not bad. So that's kind of like a gist of the command pattern. I think it illustrates the point. And at the end of the day, again, I'll kind of reiterate some of the benefits here. If you have anything where you might have race conditions of things needing to be done in a certain order, this is good for that. It allows you to have separation of concerns because your commands can basically hold all the logic to do something. And for your game objects that are kind of interacting with these commands, they can just worry about creating them and putting them onto your queue or the stack, whatever. They don't even really need to worry about that actually because the way we set it up, the command itself is putting itself on the stack. Yeah, so it just really needs to like create commands and then your commands actually do the thing and then your managers are like receiving these things and managing the state of how, what commands have been done, et cetera, right? That, it just makes sense. It's kind of like a separation of concerns there. It's clean. So if you thought this was interesting, please give the video a like, it really helps. And before you go, well, I command you to subscribe. Thanks for watching. Thank you.